Pam. All right, time for Coffee Talk. And it is our job as parents to teach our children to help blossom into bright young minds. That's what we try for. Theoretically. <laughs> uh, but when our children start to teen splain, well, that's when we start to get a little annoyed. This all started from one mom whose teen was explaining or teen splaining the concept of how bookstores work. Mm. This is when she called an expert for questions. Dr. Katie Hurley, who is a licensed clinical social worker, explained that teens are just examining the world through their lens. She advises parents to follow the 80-20 rule, where you should listen to your teen 80% of the time and talk 20%. It is also good to recognize that a lot has changed since your childhood and even your teens, your teen's childhood. Uh, finally, remember you can learn a lot from your teen. Teens are fighting for issues that matter, which is good. But we now, as of today, have three teens yeah. in and out of our house as Kendall turns 13 today. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole lot of teen splaining going on a <laughs> lot of the time. So can I ask you this, because I'm sure that's very annoying having the concept of a bookstore explained to you. Well, but don't you just love that they're opening up and talking in this world of everyone staring at yes, a screen like you don't this? Want, you don't want to discourage, you know, that thinking. But, it, but I think a lot of it goes back to you're not as smart as you think you are yet. We got a lot of years under our belts as parents, and you have to understand part of that. And there's a happy medium in there. That 80-20 thing, okay, I'll try. I'll try that on for size. It's that way anyway, because they won't well. shut up. They just, just keep about to going. Say that. That's kind of the natural ebb and flow is about 80-20. Right. Right. But I, you try and get, you know. Yes. Yeah, I, I think you raise a good point, though, because the only opportunity to try to express, well, hold on, take a step back, I have some experience in this field, is if they open a dialogue, mm -hmm. right? So it's at least good that they're talking. Yeah. Yes. Even if they're, even if they're teen explaining. Yes. And even if when you try to explain that you kind of know how the world works and you've been at this for a while, all they hear is, right. But that's okay. Right. And that's it, okay. And it, there was we had a lot of this yesterday at home with Katie yeah. and her son going talking about protein shakes and why it's and, and she's going, but I, do, I, but you don't understand. I can, but so it, it's I because it gets to me. So is this what I have to look forward to? Uh, maybe. I can't maybe. wait. Leo You're a will patient be an person. angel yeah. through and yeah. through. Yes, he yeah. will. The Great Resignation, remote work, quiet quitting. Americans have gone through a lot of different type of work modes post-pandemic. And the latest one, it made me laugh. It's called window sitting. Essentially, it's someone who just sits at their desk and stares out the window with nothing to do. Which, if you have a desk near a window, that sounds Kudos. nice, because I sure Kudos. don't. Yeah. But if you are at your desk with a long list to do, you are probably thinking, this drives me nuts. Timmy over in accounting doesn't do anything. Come on, Timmy. Timmy. According to MSN, window sitting is a state of deadlock between a company that does not want to take the responsibility of firing an employee and an employee who just won't quit. If the company mm. fired said employee, that company would probably be on the hook for paying unemployment. So the intention is to make the employee feel ignored, unimportant. Thus, they spend ample time during the day just sitting around staring out the window. It sounds kind of nice. They, <laughs> they eventually quit. But according to a career coach and wellness expert, this can be a form of workplace bullying. Wait, on who's on the window sitter's behalf? No, on the boss's behalf. They okay. are bullying you by not giving you any tasks, any responsibilities. That's listen, bully me all day <laughs> long, baby. Sounds like this sounds like a scene out of uh, what was the movie? Office Space. Office Space. Office Space. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what this is. <laughs> yeah, he literally rebuilds his cubicle so he or, has a window view. Yeah, yeah. or George that's Costanza, right. you know. He, <laughs> that's right. You work here? Uh -huh. <laughs> so there we go. Shout out to all the window sitters out there. Wow, good for you. We have long suspected that moms are what the world calls the default parents, meaning they are the ones who the school, the doctor's office, the daycare provider, you name it, reach out to first. You're first on the little form that you fill out, the contact list. 
Now there's new research that actually proves that. For the sake of time, I'm going to quickly break this down for you. This specific report wanted to know who the school would call first when they needed something. So they looked at three different scenarios. In the first scenario, no specific parent was mentioned. So they were basically just told to call a parent. 59% of the time, they called mom first. How much? 59% of the time. I kind of seems thought it'd low. Be Six higher. out of 10. Me too. Very okay. low. Me too. Changing time. In the second scenario, the dad was the available parent, quote unquote, but even then, the school still called mom 26% of the time. I don't know what to make out of that. The final scenario focused on mom being the more available, in which she was called 90% of mm. the time. So I guess that means dad mm. was only called 10% mm -hmm. of the time. So from the findings, it does seem to prove that when mom is more available, they call mom, but even when dad is most available, about one out of every four times they still call mom. I always, I always, here's the way to look at this. Nobody ever yells, Daddy, when the, when the engine flames out and you're at 26,000 feet. They always yell, Mommy, right? Mommy, I love my mommy. That's a good point. It's a true story. Yeah. True story. Well, now I don't want to fly anymore if the engine's <laughs> flaming out. My gosh. Just, just one example of okay. potentially many. Right. Stick around, we're going to talk about this more <laughs> on today's Great Day Extra Live. Today's GDXL kicks off on Great Day's Facebook page about 10.15 this morning. Hope you can join us and chime in. It's brought to you by the Bomberito Automotive Group. All right, it is common. You ever wonder why most angels are females? I mean, when you think of an angel, you think of a lady with mm -hmm. wings and dressed yeah, in white and that's going, what the Christmas ornament looks like. Well, I'm just saying. Yeah. My mom once told me I am an angel and she keeps looking for my little wings. Aww. I think they're there. Nothing that yet. is freaking hysterical. <laughs> well, today they're covered by pleather. Leave me alone. It's <laughs> true. It is commonly known that dogs can provide humans comfort and can lead to reduced stress. But in some cases, <laughs> we won't go there. Really. But did you know that humans can also provide that back to dogs? <laughs> Apparently it's true. In a recent video on TikTok, Beagle owner and veterinary technician Gabby revealed the adorable reason why dogs tend to lick their owners before sleep. According to Gabby, the act of licking releases endorphins, which can help them go to sleep. Aww. It also provides them a feeling of safety, reminding them of their puppyhood. Aww. And it is their natural way of expressing affection to their owners. So the next time your dog licks you before they go to sleep, remember, it's just their way of saying, I love you. This is according to Gabby, who's a veterinary technician. On TikTok. On TikTok. So my friend Laren, who is a veterinarian, has told me, Laura, the dog doesn't have a sense of time. Right. He can't remember anything. It's fine. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Put him in the kennel. It's, it's a dog. So whether you're gone for a minute or two days, the dog, Charlie's like, Whatever. Yeah. My so, dog licks my pants when I come home. I don't understand that. And he always and he and he's like going back to his puppy. He's eyes. like a, he's like a stealth licker. You know, you'll walk by him and he'll walk by you and go and just <laughs> stick his tongue out and lick your pants real quick. Like or like yes. if I let him in, right. I open the door to let him in and he walks by me. He just like a passing blow. He just boom, he just licks my pants and I stop it. According, he knows I don't according like to him. Gabby, I think that means uh, he loves you, but he doesn't want anyone to know it. <laughs> exactly. He's just like, just, just, I don't care. It's like he has a crush <laughs> on you. <laughs> right. Get in line, pal. Check yes or no. Hands you a little note. Oh, coming up after. <laughs>